Hi guys, it's Nancy and today I am happy to announce to you guys I am part of the new release group for Blue Night Rubber Stamps. I am helping out as one of the design team members for this release and the stamp that I got lucky enough to, to feature is this cute little llama stamp. So I just wanted to walk you guys through um, coloring this guy. Um, it's really not that hard. As most of you know, if you've been on my channel before, I'm not really that good at coloring. So, um, you know, it's a good learning experience when you have an image like this that's pretty big and open. And I just wanted to go through it with you guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have some Nina Solar White here and I am going to adjust you guys a little bit here. And I have my Tim Holtz stamping platform. And the reason I'm using this is just because this is such a large stamp and I have it on the, um, the rubber side, as you can see here, because we are using a red rubber cling stamp. And what's nice is, um, Blue Knight Rubber Stamps does, um, they make their, they print their own stamps, so, which is really nice. And what I want to do when I put this down is not immediately stamp with it because you can see here that if I stamp down, he's actually crooked. So I want to line up um, the straightness of, if that makes sense, the border. So I am basically looking at this line and making sure it's on the same grid line and then making sure this is on the same grid line. So there are two lines there that I am trying to make sure are straight before I put my paper down, okay? So the other thing that I have is a little, uh, just a little tacky adhesive I put on the back of my cardstock um, just because I don't know where I want it at this point and I don't wanna put the magnets on it yet until again that I have that lined up. And I'm just looking down on my grid lines again and just trying to make sure that it's all straight before I stick it down. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. And I am gonna put a couple of magnets on it. Lost the other one under the stamp platform. And, it, you know, use whatever stamping platform you have, if you have a Misty or whatever. Okay. So, the next thing I'm going to do is ink it up. I did get myself a new um, archival ink pad today. There is also a sentiment that goes with the stamp, and I will get to that in just a few. All right, so I'm going to be using black archival ink. No, I'm not, because we're going to be copy coloring. Not using black archival ink. <laughs> we're going to be using our Copic or alcohol-based markers, so we're going to be using Memento Tuxedo Black, which is another reason why I'm using a stamp positioner, because we will probably have to stamp this down a few times. trying not to hit the camera and I hit it anyway. Now for this stamp, there are a lot of uh, delicate lines to it. So it does take a couple of um, inkings and stampings. Actually, that came out pretty good for the first time around. That's pretty good. I just need to do a little more around his face, I think. So I think one more inking and we'll be okay here. Guys, just have a lot of stuff on my desk. I should probably clean it up. You know, it's so funny is I went and picked up Leah this morning from her grandmother's house, which is like an hour away. And then, um, well, actually it was around this afternoon. And then Leah and I stopped at a Michael's that's down by her grandmother's because I was like, hey, let me go check out a different Michael's because, you know, sometimes different stores carry different products. So we go there and then we come home and it's like around dinner time I guess but um, we had eaten on the way back so we weren't hungry so then I started watching this new TV show on Netflix called 
the Umbrella Academy, which is pretty interesting. It kind of reminded me of like a knockoff version of the X-Men. Um, but it was pretty interesting. So we watched that for a little bit. And then, um, you know, it's getting pretty late. So I give her a bath, tell her to get ready for bed. And I'm like, I'm not tired. I wasted like the whole day just vegging out on the couch. What am I going to do? And I was like, I know, I'll go down and make that card that I, I was going to make. So here I am. Okay, so I just want to show you the difference. This was me stamping it out with the Misty, and it's still nice, but there was a couple areas that I just didn't get enough ink on to press it out so the lines are more delicate. And I was able to put a little more pressure with the Tim Holtz, so I think this came out much darker. So I'm a lot happier with this print than I was with the first print. And then all you're going to do is just clean your stamp off. I'm not going to take it off of the Misty yet. I mean, off of the Tim Holtz platform yet. I'm going to leave it in here just in case. Well, I really do have to take it off because um, even if it doesn't line up, I took my paper off. So never mind that. I was going to say just in case you need to restamp it, but never mind that. We're going to put this guy away. Okay. So I'm going to start with the llama. Um some lighter browns here I'll try to remember to tell you guys the names of them I do mix and match my alcohol markers I use some Copics I use some um, spectrum noir and then I do have a scratch piece of paper off to the side that I like to just kind of test my colors on before I actually put them down onto my image and again, I'm not, I'm still a novice at this whole Copic marker coloring thing. And I colored them in brown, but I think for this llama, I think we'll, we'll go to, uh, let's try some warm grays. Let's see how he does with that. Because llamas are generally like a grayish, right? Like they're like a tannish gray. So I have warm gray one three five and zero so i think i'm going to start with these so i'm going to start with the zero which is the lightest and just kind of color him all over nothing special there with the strokes and i know it's hard for you guys to see there's really not too much color laid down there and all i'm doing is just giving him a base coat of color here The only place I didn't color was over his eye. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next color, which would be warm gray one. And I like to use the brush tip. And I'm just gonna start adding color by just flicking it on. And again, we're still at the lightest layer, so it doesn't need to be a lot of color. You don't need to feel like you're obligated to start coloring him in everywhere. I am just randomly flicking that color in. And I know you guys aren't seeing a whole bunch of that color, but believe me, it's going down and I'll show you here soon enough. All we're really doing at this point is just saturating the paper. All right, so I'm gonna go in with warm gray number three, which is the next one for me. And I'm going to start um, flicking the colors in, but in the areas where the illustrator has already drawn in darker lines, those are the areas that I'm going to concentrate on putting more color in. And in the areas where the illustrator has not put real dark lines, I'm just going to very random sporadic colors in those areas. So there's already natural highlights and shadows in this drawing from the original illustrator. Now with W5, and I am not the type of person that wants to sit and color for hours, 
frankly, I don't have the time for that. I don't have the patience for that. So anything that makes it easier for me, that makes it look like I'm good at coloring, and stamps like this from Blue Night Rubber Stamps make it super easy. So now obviously this color is a little darker, so. We're gonna go back in with the W3 and blend some of that W5 out. And again, I'm just doing light flicking motions here. I'm not fully coloring it in, not really having any rhyme or reason other than just doing light flicking. And they're just going backwards in colors. Back down to one. And as I get lighter, I'm coloring more of the area just to get that color spread out. Now, just to give him a little more definition, okay, this is BG4. This is a Spectrum Noir, and it's a little darker than what I've been using, but I'm just going to lightly go in and, again, just do some flicking just to define some of those areas. You know where his fuzzy fur is. BG6, again, just a couple of flicks. Oh, Leah's school picture just fell down. Okay. I guess that's my cue to color faster. Notice when I'm doing the lower part of his face, I'm flicking downwards because I would imagine that that fur is going down and away from his face. When I get to the upper part, I am flicking upwards. This is W00. I'm just going to go in and I'm just kind of softening these edges between the light and the dark area. Anywhere that I feel like the lines are too harsh, not blending well, I'm going to go in with this lightest color and saturate that and blend it out. And then BG8 is a super dark warm gray. Very little of this is going to go down. Very light hand, very light flicking. I mean, it's really just like very little lines, very light flicking. That's, that's all my strokes are. Again, the illustrator has already taken the time to add the highlights, the depths, the shadows. I don't want to go in and ruin any of that. So very light touch here. Now this one I'm going to go in and do his nose a little darker with. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Um, so we want to work on the flowers a little bit. That's really simple. I just used a couple of colors of green. I didn't do a whole bunch of anything fancy there. All right, so this one is G21, which is a really light green. 
and I, um, I pretty much just color in the whole, all of the leaves the same colors because I, I want them all to be uniform. Yes, I know they're different flowers and they're different sizes, and but that's okay. We want the focus to be our llama, not our flowers. Flowers are just there to accent. I don't know if I mentioned, I'm using Nina Solar White Classic Crest paper. Um, this paper does really well with accepting Copics and allowing the Copics to blend, which is why I like to use it for Copic coloring. I would have normally done this live so you guys can ask me questions, but I feel like it would have been a really long video. I don't normally do coloring in front of you guys because I feel like it takes a while, but I know some of you guys enjoy watching videos, and if I can help anybody along the way, great. I'm happy to do that for you guys. Okay, so I think my greens are pretty much done. And then I just take, this is a much brighter green, this is YG06, and I just go like from the center and pull it in, like from the, just to give that leaf a little bit of shadow, some depth, and again just doing some light flicking and pulling it in just in the middle there. Now, there are some great colorists out there. Um, Kelly Latavola does great coloring. Um, Christina Warner does great coloring. Who else? Sandy Alnuck does great coloring. There's a lot of Copic coloring videos out there. So by all means, check all those guys out. I tend to do quick, fast, easy coloring. So I'm not trying to win any kind of contest here. I'm just trying to add some colors, some depth, and basically just using two green markers to do that. Okay, now, I feel like changing it up a little bit and maybe making these like some kind of a fuchsia color. So let's see, what do we have here? Let's start with a lighter pink. This is PP3, and this is a Spectrum Noir. This one's going a little dry. All right, maybe we're not going to get too far with this guy. This one is RV02. These almost look like um, dogwood flowers, I guess. But it's your art, you make them whatever color you want. They can be any kind of flowers you want. And you can check out all of the Blue Night Rubber Stamps release on their website, bluenightrubberstamps.com. Um, Michelle did a release at Bellissima Cards um, on her blog 
There is going to be a list. I will post it on my Facebook page, Nancy Stamps 15. You can go through the blog hop and look at all the different blogs and YouTube channels. And you can see all the stamps. And there actually is a chance for someone to win some free stamps. So I would highly recommend checking out those other websites and blogs and videos and entering. Okay, actually... Now at this point, I'm just going to just try to brighten up the centers a little bit. Ooh, that might be too bright. Let's see here. This is RV zero, RV zero 06. I can't speak. I'm just going to put that in the center and try to pull that out and see how we can... Boy, that is a bright color. That might be too bright. pretty though. All right, I'm going to go back in with the RV02 and try to mute that down a little bit. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Now, if you didn't want all the brush lines and you didn't want people to see that those are your strokes, you would continue to go in with a couple of different colors and blend that out. That doesn't really bother me, um, but again, everybody has different styles of doing their coloring. I think those blended out okay. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to color is this background, which I want it to be in a really light blue. Almost like he's looking inside the window. So I'm going to use BG000 for that. And all I'm going to do is just color around the flower, stay inside the border. And color around our little llama. And again, I'm not being real precise here. The leaves are already green, so it's not going to hurt to put a little bit of blue on them. That's pretty quick and easy coloring, right? And I'll just take a couple passes just to smooth out some of those brush strokes a little bit. But I think that really makes our llama pop by putting that blue background. And it goes very nicely with the pink and the green and the flowers. Now I have this B00, which is a little darker. And all I'm going to do is just gently border our little llama here. Just so it looks like he has a little bit of a shadow. It's very hard to see. You guys see that? So then I'm just going to go back in with the um, the BG000 and blend that border out a little bit. And most people aren't going to notice it, but it really does make him pop off the page. So the last thing I want to do is I really want his eye to stand out. So I have a black jelly roll pen and I'm just going to trace the inside of his eyeball here. I'm going to color that in. 
around the top of his eye. And it just really makes that pop. If you wanted to, you could go in and just highlight some of those eyelashes. I am also going to do his little nostril here and trace around his nose and his little smile here. And that black just really makes it pop. And then for a final touch, I'm going to take a little shimmer pen. This one's Wink Estella. If you have the Spectrum Noir, you can use that too. And I'm just going to put those on the flowers. It's a very little bit of shimmer, but it really makes those flowers pop. Who doesn't like a little shimmer? Okay. Now I did make a little mistake when I was stamping it right there. There's a little extra ink on the image. So I'm going to take my mono eraser and try to erase that out of there. It's like the stamp bounced. Okay, and that is all gone now. Now this, um, this little guy did come with a little sentiment. The sentiment is always be joyful. It's a separate little stamp. And you can, um, if you're comfortable, you can stamp it out separately. Um, I don't know how comfortable I am doing that. Let me stamp it on this scratch piece of paper. I wanna make sure that it is straight. I might just get my stamping tool out and do it again. I'm just going to use that same Memento ink. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. Hope I don't stamp it crooked. That would suck if I... Oh, pretty good if I colored the whole thing and then I stamped it crooked. That would really, that would not be good. I'd be like, oh, no. That would just be an opportunity for embellishment then. Okay, so we are done coloring. What do you guys think? Do you think he's a cute little llama? I do have a card base made up. And he is card base size. But I think I want to mat him on some pink paper. Let's see if I have a piece of pink paper. Ooh, actually, maybe wood grain paper would be better. Nah, he's too gray. All right, let me just cut my panel down. So originally he was five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm going to cut him down to five and a quarter by four. It's going to be really tight, but I think we can do it. Take a little sliver off of this edge. Right to the very edge of the line there. Same thing here. Perfect. Okay. So that is now cut down to five and a quarter by four. Four. and what I can do then is just grab a colored piece of paper just using one of these for example this is not what I'm going to use but just showing you I can use a colored piece of paper in the background and then have that matted like that so there you go guys that is the coloring for the new llama stamp from creative um yeah from <laughs> from a blue night rubber stamps um and again, join the other designers on their blogs, on their websites, and you have a chance to win some free stamps from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. If you have any questions, post them down below. And I would like to know which llama do you like better? Do you like the gray llama? And let me turn this light down. It's kind of bright in here. Is that better? Do you like the gray llama? Or do you like the brown llama? So comment down below. 
and go ahead and check out the other blog posts. I will put them at the bottom of um, the description box underneath this video so you guys can click on the links and check out all the other artists as well. And check out Blue Knight Rubber Stamps for the 24 stamps that were released. Thanks for watching and as always, keep on stamping guys. Bye-bye.